Municipal Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. On April 2nd, Premier Wab Kanu and the governing Manitoba NDP tabled the Manitoba Provincial Budget. Now, according to the province, quote, Budget 2024 delivers on the government's commitment to rebuild health care across Manitoba and lower costs for families, end quote. Manitoba's Minister of Finance, who tabled the budget, said, quote, we're making smart, targeted investments. We can take steps to fix health care and lower costs, and we can do it while being responsible with public money and charting a path back to balance. That's what Manitobans can expect from our first budget, end quote. Now, we caught up and sat down with Cam Blight, the president of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities, for his reaction to this first NDP provincial budget. We will discuss his key takeaways from the budget and how the budget will impact municipalities across the province. This is Municipal Affairs. Cam, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by asking your initial reactions to this week's uh, provincial budget that Wab Canoe and the governing Manitoba NDP tabled on, I want to make sure I'm getting this right, Tuesday, April 2nd. Yes. Yeah, you know, Chris, uh, I'm going to suggest that there wasn't really any surprises uh, necessarily there. It's kind of somewhat what we expected. Um, you know, we were pleased to see that there's a slight increase to a couple of our operating baskets, uh, one for uh, general operating and the other one is a strategic infrastructure basket. Um, you know, they did fall short of the mark of, uh, you know, what we're hoping for. Uh, you know, we're hoping for a little bit more, something, you know, similar to that of the rate of inflation or similar to that of what the uh, school divisions received, which was 3.4%. Uh, we got 2%. Um, you know, we're also hoping to see a, a built-in escalator, like a multi-year funding model in place. And But the good news is that we saw in the budget, there is a specific uh, mention to uh, a commitment by the provincial government to working with ourselves in the city of Winnipeg to develop a, a new multi-year funding model. So uh, we checked that off as a win. Uh, we're pleased to see that. And we look forward to working with the provincial government on that. Uh, One of the oh. investing. Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say, I was going to ask because I, I've spoken to some of your member communities over the last few months. And one of the things that I'm hearing over and over again is infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. A lot of talk about housing right now and a lot of talk about municipalities bearing the blunt of that infrastructure deficit and need for more infrastructure to create those houses. Uh, you talk about that 2% increase to the funding for municipalities. Um I don't want to ask the stupid political question, but I'm going to have to a little bit. But what, what what's the magic number that you would have wanted to have seen to help address some of these infrastructure deficits to help municipalities across the province address some of these infrastructure needs? Well, you know, I, I can't put a, a magic figure on the percentage increase that we'd like to see for this. Um, you know, a lot of the infrastructure deficit that we're experiencing right now is very large scale. And it's going to be, require uh, three levels of government to, uh, you know, to address the issue. Um, you know, we're, we're talking, you know, currently in Manitoba, we have well over a billion dollar deficit in water, wastewater, shovel ready projects. And so, you know, a percentage increase to the strategic infrastructure basket is not going to cover that. So uh, you know, we need to put together a strategy and a plan to address this because this is costing us, you know, hurting us future growth wise, not just residentially, but uh, also economically. Uh, there's a lot of municipalities that are turning or, turning away economic growth opportunities. And uh, that's very detrimental to the province of Manitoba and the country of Canada. Do you think this government gets it? Do you think this government understands that the municipalities are struggling? And while you say this is a good first step budget, I, I can imagine you would rather have seen three first steps instead of just one good first step. Yeah, I, I think this is a, a small step forward uh, in some cases. Uh, I mean, does this government get it? I, I think so. They're, they're willing to listen. They want to better understand the needs and challenges of municipalities. So that is huge. And so that's where, you know, that's where we come into play. This is my job. It's our AMM's team's job to uh, help them better understand these challenges and concerns and how it's negatively impacting municipalities and the province of Manitoba. And, you know, I, I've consistently said that, you know, if municipalities are doing well, then the province is going to do well and vice versa. The province says, well, municipalities do well. So, Let's work at this together and that we are a great investment, but we, we, we can't do this alone. Uh, you know, really, our only our, our main way of generating revenues is through taxation. 
And we can't cripple our, our residents any more than they already are. It's cost of living is through the roof and they're struggling and we're doing everything we can. But also there's this burden that's being put upon us by the federal government and provincial government to increase our housing and to help uh, you know, house the new the, the influx of population into our country. Well, that doesn't just happen overnight. We just don't, uh, you know, go you know, reach and grab our magic wand and poof, here we go, there's a few more housing users. It's not the game of Monopoly where we just plunk them out of the box and set them down with some cash. Um, each one of these homes requires a significant amount of infrastructure. And right now, that 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 those costs are have to be borne by municipalities and we just cannot afford to do it. So if we have these aggressive housing targets that are in place, we need supports from the federal and provincial levels of government. One of the areas that I, I know is near and dear to AMM's heart, uh, during the last uh, provincial campaign, you came out with your advocacy cam uh, campaign, which is Let's Grow Manitoba Together. And one of the key pillars for that is crime and rural crime. Um, I recently had the pleasure to sit down and chat with Stonewall Mayor Sandra Smith, and we talked about rural crime and crime being an issue in her community. Does this budget address rural crime in a ma matter that municipal municipalities are comfortable with or do they fall short in this budget to address uh, crime issues across the province? I'm a firm believer there's a positive in every negative and uh, I'm struggling to find the positive in this one. Uh, this is one where we're, I'm really gonna have to dig deep and look hard um, but the, I, I, the positive is that I, I do know that this Department of Justice Department has wanted to work with Manitobans and wanted to work with municipalities and try and address this issue. So, uh, you know, that's where it is. But I, I firmly do believe, and, and from, you know, from our quick glance, we have to do a deeper dive into this entire budget to look at it in, in all fairness. Uh, but, but I do believe it falls short. It, it's, um, it, it's less than ideal when it comes to, uh, you know, public safety and addressing uh, rural crime. And when I speak of rural crime, it's it's largely it's out of the side of the city of Winnipeg. I, I think the crime in city of Winnipeg is well documented, and and so I'll, I'll speak of uh, rural crime outside of the city of Winnipeg. And we we're blessed as the executive team to travel and visit all 137 municipalities across our province. And a constant theme: every single municipality we go to, they talk about crime. Uh, a very recent probe research poll uh, just came out. We just saw the numbers, the information, and it said the number one issue concerning Manitobans is crime. And I, I just don't think that this budget went far enough to addressing the, uh, the, the, the crime, the criminal activity that's taking place in our, in our province. What would you want them to do? What's a good first step? Because we always talk about we, whenever I speak to municipal leaders, I always hear this, the al analogy that if you have an issue, come to me with a solution and then we'll work on that solution together. What would have been a good first step for this provincial government, this budget to address some of the issues around rural crime in municipalities? Is it more community peace officers? Is it the pilot program that Portage La Prairie is going through right now? What would have been a good first step? Well, you know, some of the steps are without the, or beyond the control of the provincial government. It starts at the federal level, of course. Okay, so we need to make sure that we're champions of this and trying to advocate for, um, uh, you know, bail reform, which is solely taking place. But we have to make sure it makes makes the needs meets the needs of uh, Manitobans. And the bottom line is. Uh, there needs to be consequences to these criminal activities and these actions and make sure that the rehabilitation is there for those that want to do, you know, seek help. We want to make sure that's all in place. But what could have been done for municipalities, in our opinion, is they could have expanded uh, funding for community safety and well-being plans to all municipalities who want to take part in that. Um, and, you know, expand funding for community safety officers. Right now, we have a massive shortage of RCMP officers and, and, and municipal police force officers uh, with boots on the ground. There, there's, we have some of the highest uh, shortages across the country. Uh, but you know, let's take some other steps to at least try to alleviate some of the pressures on our uh, police officers by implementing some community safety officer uh, programs, if those municipalities so desire and if it's a good fit for them. Um, so, you know, th those are just a few things that could have been done uh, that we'd like to see that that requires funding that municipalities cannot bear alone. Um, and so th that, that's one of our major asks. And, and we're going to continue the dialogue. In fact, uh, Minister Weave has already reached out uh, in regards to uh, some of the, the, the media that's taken place uh, regarding my concerns over public safety or lack thereof. 
And so, you know, that, that's an excellent first step. And it tells me that they want to, you're trying to find a way to make things better. And uh, we do know we have an excellent working relationship with Minister Weave, and we're going to continue to do that to, and try and work collaboratively together to address these concerns. While we're talking on the more provincial scale, I wanted to go a little bit local, if you don't mind, for yourself as Reeve of the RM of Portage La Prairie, is there anything in this budget for your community that you look at and you say, okay, this is a good uh, initial uh, investment into the RM for the residents of the RM of Portage? Well, I, I think you just got to look at the investment of the healthcare uh, specifically. Um, you know, th this province is uh, put a uh, a significant uh, emphasis on, you know, trying to invest in healthcare and take care of some of the labor shortages that are out there, address some of the transportation times for, you know, for uh, medical patients. Um, they're looking at a, uh, a rural doctor recruitment fund, which I, I you're going to re-implement that. I think that's excellent. Um, so, but, you know, healthcare is top of mind for us. And we're really happy to see that. We're very fortunate in my municipality that uh, in the city of Portage and Prairie, there's a brand new hospital being built. Um, but, you know, it, it's great to have these new facilities that are, you know, of larger scale, et cetera. But we need the staffing component there. So, you know, that's absolutely critical. And we see that this provincial government is trying to take steps to address that. And we want to work together with the provincial government to try and help them accomplish these targets and these goals. Very political question again, but I've asked it to every single one of your sister organizations, whether it be RMA, uh, Rural Municipalities of Alberta, SUMA, SARM. Looking back uh, at April 1st, are, you, are municipalities better off today than they were prior to this budget? I, I'm going to have to say marginally yes. Um, you know, we're seeing a 2% increase um, uh, in operational funding. We're, you know, if I remove the health care component from this, that's where I'll say marginally best. It, it's going to be, we're going to have to wait and see and see how things turn out uh, with the health care side of things and if, if they're able to accomplish some of the goals and targets. Um, but, you know, the, the, we, we need to see a greater emphasis put on funding for infrastructure. And so that, that is something that we really need to work with the provincial government on to help them better understand the challenges that we have there and the needs, um, you know, but, you know, receiving a 2% uh, increase operating increase, uh, you know, does make a difference for municipalities, but it's not enough, but, um, you know, it, it's better than not receiving anything at all. And so, uh, you know, the, we're going to continue to work with the provincial government and the commitment that they have there to work on a multi-year funding model um, is absolutely critical. And so we're really uh, appreciative of seeing that. So I think that's a huge step um, in, in the right direction. So this budget is tabled a week prior to AMM meeting in Brandon, Manitoba, where municipal leaders from across the province will be getting together to talk about some of the issues that they have in common, to talk about some of the issues that I'm assuming they have uh, that they want to advocate for. What are you looking to take away from this uh, three-day conference in Brandon, Manitoba, which for transparency's sake, I should note that I will be there. So I'm looking forward to being in Brandon and talking to some of your municipal colleagues from across the province and having them on the show. So for you, what are you hoping that people take away from this three-day conference in Brandon? Well, first of all, we're so happy to have you there, and thank you for making the track out. Uh, I think it's excellent the work that you're doing to help showcase and, and bring forward municipal issues and concerns, and uh, you know, and not just that, but also some of the great successes that municipalities have. So there's a lot of great things going on across this country, and it all starts at the ground level with municipalities, and you're helping to bring that to the forefront. So thank you so much. Uh, but you know, it, it, it's it. This is a great convention, especially for myself. I, I, I'm not quite as busy or as active with uh, uh, with specific duties, et cetera. So I can kind of walk around and and you know speak with members and get a you know get a feel for a sense for how they're feeling, and especially so close to this budget being released. So um, I, I think this is an excellent convention where there's a lot of educational seminars, um, you know, a lot of great breakout e events for members to uh, better understand, uh, you know, some of the, the the challenges going on out there and what some other municipalities have been doing, et cetera. Um, we have some excellent speakers in place and, you know, it's just the networking uh, that takes place and just, you know, speaking with other municipal leaders. Uh, there's so many great takeaways and positives that can come from 
from it. And of course, you know, th this one has our bigger trade show. And that, that is something that's always a key uh, highlight. And we have some excellent uh, companies that come and support our trade show. And we're very grateful for that. But I do know that our staff do a phenomenal job putting together our convention. And I'm very appreciative of the great work that they all do. And, and I'm really excited to be able to go and, and see and speak with a lot of our members here at this coming uh, convention. Are you expecting to have these conversations around this budget and how it is impacting your the local communities? Because prior to this budget, I know that you and AMM did do a big cross-province tour, speaking to municipal leaders in each and every single province. Now that you've got their information of what the budget they're hoping for, now you're going to be talking about the post uh, sort of budget recap. Are you expecting to have those tough decisions to say, okay, where can we sort of advocate and fine tune our advocacy to make sure the government is hearing us for budget 2025 yeah absolutely and you know chris i i, I do take we, we have to give the, our provincial government credit they've they've only been in power for six months okay and you know they're just trying to find their way and find exactly what they have to work with and what they don't um but, you know for us to be mentioned some of our concerns to be addressed in this provincial bu budget is a positive and especially when they reference that there's going to be future consultation taking place to address some of our major concerns so the groundwork is there it's in place and so you know we have been heard um they have used a lot of our language uh they're speaking our words so i i think that's absolutely critical and i feel that's very positive Positive. And, you know, it's the, 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 this is the first step. You know, we're going to continue to build off of this. And, and I'm really looking forward to that. And, and that's the message that I want to convey to our members. Um, you know, that, that, that this that there's there's this budget was was still positive for municipalities and it's going in the right direction. We can't always say that about budgets of the past. <laughs> So, um, you know, th this is exciting, but I, I, it's a great opportunity for me to hear individual perspectives from the municipalities. And that allows us to build that into our, uh, you know, presentations to the ministers and, and how we have our discussions and, and try and, um, uh, you know, s showcase our concerns and our challenges and, and trying to find solutions to move forward that'll better all municipalities across the province of Manitoba. Cam, it's always a pleasure. I look forward to seeing you in person again in Brandon, Manitoba in literally one week's time. And hopefully we can go grab a drink while we're there. Sounds great. Thank you so much and safe travels to Brandon. See you then. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations on the cross-border interviews and our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. Now, we are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But... Your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy over the last few years. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.